Hey guys and gals, what's going on? It's Gmeister here, and welcome to another episode of the Socks Off Podcast. With me, I have a gentleman and a lady, and they can introduce, introduce themselves in any particular order. Hello, I'm JJJ7, and I am back. Woo. And... Uh... Hi, I'm Noir. Noir.exe has stopped working for he a few seconds, but now he's back. Yeah, he died. And today we're talking about Sonic the Hedgehog. I was actually going to be in, the, if you actually think about it, I was actually going to be in the, another episode, but because of technical difficulties, but now I'm here and that's good and that's great and that's great and that's wonderful and also a very confusing because what the fuck? We've had a very interesting time with different people coming, supposed to be on different episodes, not being on episodes, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. We're here to talk about a blue hedgehog. Are you yeah. sure? Are you sure he's not spiky? Oh, no, he's very spiky. Does he have quills? Yeah, he, uh, he just so happens to have quills. Does he wear pumas? I had to think about that. Hey. Um, okay. okay. Was, in the Sonic movie, was he wearing Puma or Nike? No, they made, remember, the, so, Sega and Puma made a deal. Uh, oh yeah, an official shoe, right. Yeah. And then in the, didn't it? Okay, in the Sonic movie, in his original design, was he like wearing Nike or something? I believe so, that fun. It was, yeah, it was like Red Nikes. Or Puma, wait, Puma, I think it was. Was it Puma? It was Puma, yeah, Puma. They had a deal with Puma. Puma. That's odd. Puma is weird to say. Listen, frick Puma, I'm still sticking with the soap shoes. Uh, but I gotta lie, the soap shoes are pretty epic. Oh yeah, mm. like, the Sonic Adventure 2 shoes are awesome. Honestly, yeah, I, w- I would totally wear those. Like, IRL, like, you're just walking around town wearing, like, Sonic shoes. And this time we can- <laughs> I honestly would. Just show off how much I like it. Well, honestly, Sonic this time we can actually understand what Jesse is saying this time. Yes. Very true. It's, it's great. Very great. So, very. if we had to like start off somewhere, let's start off with this. How did you guys get into Sonic? Was it like via the games, different media? Like, how did you guys get into it? I will start first. Uh, rock paper scissors for it. We can't see. <laughs> we'll do it in the in the Discord chat. Then we'll we'll go and then someone will just say random. Okay. Oh, I'm. Oh, all right. Sorry, all right. All right. Okay, I'll pick a random emoji, and you have to pick one, too. Like, you have to pick... Okay, yeah, there's gestures for Rock Paper Scissors, I believe. Are you kidding? Okay, I'll go first. I'll go first. Oh, oh come on. I wanted to compete for <laughs> I had a different idea. Maybe get ready for this, you know? Yep. Okay, then... And are you actually competing still? Or no? Sure. Right. Gavin went silent. Okay, now, now pick yours. I believe there's, there's a scissor gesture and a hand gesture and a a rock gesture. Now pick which one you want, and then and when Gavin says this, throw down, we'll throw it down. I tell you. All right. Okay. All right. Okay, Gavin, tell us when to throw it down. Oh, he's, he's silent. Oh, oh, no. Okay, three, two, two one, one, throw down. One. Boink. I'm <laughs> too late. Really? You had to pull it? Okay, got him. <laughs> uh, what's one? That's what supposed to be rock for me. Okay, then I won. I, I pulled the paper. All right, go first. All right. So, go. When I was a young boy, I was not really a gamer. And you for Christmas, say. I received a red DS light. And with that Christmas gift of a DS light, it came with Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Big Games. Uh, if I remember correct, wait, no, it wasn't that. That's uh, because, you know, that game about uh, 2008. Um, it was Hot Wheels. Beat that, I believe. <laughs> and uh, Sonic Rush was my other game I got with it. Oh shit, you got Sonic Rush? 
He does. Got it. It's not aggression for me, epic. And then I think my last game I received for Christmas was... Yeah, that's. I think that, that's all I can remember. So you got into Sonic via Sonic Rush? Yep. Did you enjoy it? I did. It's just whenever my save file was corrupted. Was it... Was uh, it ha- did it have something to do with the cartridge itself, or...? <clears throat> it was the cartridge itself. It, it just refused to save when I wanted it to save. I see. Correct. So you got into Sonic via Sonic Rush. Mm-hmm. Did you ever play Rush Adventure, or...? No, I haven't. I... After Rush, I remember getting a Wii. And then, in the next Christmas, my mom got me Sonic Unleashed for the Wii. Oh, you played the Wii version? Yes, because I'm a Chad. What's wrong with that? I, I played the Wii version. The Wii! It's really fun. And then... And... After... Or, I, okay, I'll... Okay. I'm gonna say this only for the, the Socks Off Podcast episode. I was actually kind of terrified to play Sonic Unleashed at first. Because of the go. whole... Because mm-hmm. of the whole Sonic... Like, Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic the Werehog. Thank you. And the concept and stuff. Yeah. Like, it kind of terrified me as a child at first. Mm, so fuzzy. Because you, because I was not really a person that liked um, horror or, or even kids horror films, films in general. I was not kind of like I was not like that when I was a kid. So you got spooked very easily. Oh. Yeah. Also, essentially, the werehog was like it was like Sonic EXE to you, essentially. Uh, I, I kid you not. Something. Have you remember I told you about Ice Age Two? Uh, when, y- yeah. I don't know if I was like that. Okay, so, oh, my mom, when me and my mom actually went to go see it, and my sister, um, my mom had to cover my ears to, from Brett screaming, because that scared the living shit out of me as a kid. Really? Oh. Yeah. Damn. Oh, no. It hurt my ears and everything. The poor child trauma. I remember my first impression of Sonic Unleashed was just a random TV commercial, and it was just then, like, oh, okay, Sonic the werewolf now, that's pretty much it. After Sonic Unleashed, I believe after that, I I know I don't really, I don't consider this as a Sonic game, even though it does have Sonic in it, which is the Sonic Racing series. The awesome one uh, by Sumo Digital. Uh, I oh. had it for the Wii, the Sonic and Sega All-Star Racing, and I played the shit out of that game. I nice. always was down for a race because it was, it felt like a good replacement to a fat, uh, obese plumber's game. Mario Kart. In my opinion, some of the All-Star mm-hmm. Racing games are actually better than some of the Mario Kart games, but... And then, after that... Um, I remember playing a Sonic Lost World. Oh, what the! I, I, I was a Sonic gamer, but I wasn't like a huge, mega, ultra Sonic fan. I was like, oh my god, it's Sonic! So you're saying you did not pay 40 bucks for Sonic Forces that lot? <laughs> and then, and after that... I play uh, no seriously. I played the shit out of that that Lost World demo, and I actually created a like like after I ran out of, of runs for that a demo, I literally reset my 3DS, created a new Nintendo account just to, just play, it to again. play it. Yes. Okay. Wait. Did, were you play, you played the 3DS demo? Yeah. Okay. I own the 3DS version of Lost World. I. I never got past. Actually, I got past Windy Hill, but I could never get past the other area because. Well, I never janky. actually had the full game. Mm-hmm. I just played the demo shit time. Uh huh. Fun fact: Fun that fact. Lost World, a 3DS game, is actually the um, last game Sonic game. And oh. then, mm-hmm. then after that, um, I kind of went on a Sonic hiatus until the internet. <laughs> Until Sonic Forces happened. 
Oh, oh, what the? So let me get this straight. Okay, so you start with Rush, you go to Unleash, you go to Ultra Racing, pretty solid. Then you skip Generations in Colors, go to Lost World, and then... It's because my, my parents were too simple-minded to know what games I wanted. Which is okay, I guess. And then you jump back on Forces, you poor bastard. <laughs> and I honestly am not gonna lie, I actually kind of enjoyed Forces. Because I didn't play really much of, like, you know, Generations or, you know, any of the other or 3D side games that use the boost formula. The good ones, yeah. Because it was still kind of new to me in my head, so that's why I enjoyed it. But oh. I will say this because, you know, it's going to be the elephant in the room in the comments about it. <laughs> I will admit the OCE creation thing is terrible. No, it's the best part of the game! <laughs> And all of it was revealed. I thought it was. I thought it was a neat idea. I mean, it was a, I can yeah. see the kids having fun with it. I mean, it was well, just, I never really saw it coming, but it's, it's a neat idea. I'll say this: it was a neat idea, but I just didn't like that it played a lot like Sonic. And yeah, essentially, your OC character is Sonic, but with the wisp on instead of the boots. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, listen, I got to dress my OC up as Joker from Persona 5, so I'm really happy Oh, yeah. That. You rich bastard. You guys like to Joker and stuff. Yeah, I got the game at launch, so I was able to dress up my OC as Joker with a grappling but hook, just I, saying. Ooh. If you have noticed, I did not talk about my, my you know, other media uh, with Sonic. Um, I believe, I, I remember, if I remember correctly, I always tuned in every Saturday a, to watch Sonic Underground and the Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. Back when channel? I was a kid. What channel had them every Saturday morning? It, it it was exclusive to who who my my you know Region. area. Okay, that makes sense because the only yeah. Sonic I had on Saturday morning was Sonic X. Yeah, Sonic X. And then, I, then and then Sonic Boom. Yep. X came around, and I actually watched a couple episodes of that when it was airing. And of course, yes, it's before you guys ask, it was the 4Kids version, so yeah. Listen, that's the only version a lot of kids grew up with, because, you know, the sub-version is exclusive to Japan, so... Yeah. Like, if you watch it on Netflix, they don't even have the sub available, you just have the dub. And then, mm -hmm. after that, I actually watched Sonic the Hedgehog movie, the, you know, the latest one. <laughs> That's the last one I, I am not gonna lie, I, I'll defend it in the original Sonic design. Oh, uh, uh, what? You mean the one where he had the human teeth and stuff? Yep. The separate eyes? And, you know, the, uh, meow? <laughs> I'll defend it. I am not kidding. I will defend it. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Before it was we... fun to meme. It was a funny meme, but even, uh, uh, freaking, what's his name? Um, the original creator of Sonic. Um, I'm, I'm like having a blur right now. So, so good, good. I can't pronounce his name. What the hell's his name? I'm gonna feel bad. Wait. Gavin, uh, host Gavin, please put it in here. Um, but Naoto Oshima. Did you um, Google it? Yeah, yeah, Na Naoto Oshima. Oshima. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yuji that... Naka and Naoto Oshima. Yeah, Yuji Naka, that's, that's what I want to talk about. Yuji Naka, right, 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 okay. Even yes. he was like, what the hell is up with that design? Yeah, yeah, he tweeted about, like, this is... He was like, oh, no, this is not it. And... It was a whole uproar about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll actually defend it, though. Like, you know, then defend it. <laughs> defend it, I'm sorry, but I actually was not a fan of it when I saw it. I was like... Oh, okay. no. So, I understand the fact that it was trying to go for a more realistic vibe with the Hedgehog. Right. I will understand that. But the thing is, though, you gotta remember that it's hard to make a, a film um, based on a Hedgehog that literally is from only and, ju and probably just only a video games. I mean, he's had plenty of comics, cartoons, etc. But the thing is, though, um, Paramount did not know that. What? They, okay, when you're, like, making a... Okay, sorry, but if I had to interrupt here. When you're, like, adapting a brand, like, a big brand like Sonic, like, here's the thing. I view, I don't even view Sonic as just a video game character anymore. The dude's just an icon. He's just... 
just some things that you have on different brands, whether it be TV shows for kids, um, freaking comics to read, like, you know, different merchandise, different crossover brand events, you know? Like, I don't... And people stealing this design for, for their own company. Exactly. Like, I don't just view Sonic as a gaming mascot. He's more of, like, just a pop culture icon. Well, the thing is that you could say the same thing with Mario, and he's only had very few other appearances outside of Nintendo Power, or the TV show, etc. Mama Luigi. Mom. Mama <laughs> Luigi! <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, we don't talk about that cursed name here. I watched that as a kid. <laughs> That's Mama Deluxe to you. Hey, yo, Mario. Um, freaking. Luigi, don't be a dinophobe. But if I had to backtrack <laughs> real quick, um, like, backtrack like almost 15 minutes ago. Jesse, how did you get into Sonic? Okay, so the way I got into I kind of got into Sonic like. Twice, essentially. Okay. The first time I found Sonic was through Sonic Riders. How I got the game, I don't remember. It could have been my brother's, but I'm not sure, but... I remember playing it with my sister on the GameCube and having a blast on this. It was so fun. And then after that, I guess, after my mom threw out all our games and essentially prohibited us from playing video games, that's when I lost touch in Sonic, essentially. I didn't really know what he was. All I know was, oh, this game is fun. Like, really fun. Cool. Little cool hedgehog. And then a couple years later, um, there was a family that was uh, that was living in with us, and the kid liked Sonic, and so he introduced me to Sonic X, and I was like, oh, I, I remember, I remember Sonic, I remember this blue guy I've seen a couple years ago, and then I started binging through Sonic X, and then found games and watching gameplays and stuff, and essentially got back in it, as well as um, reading a lot of comics online. You know, what? can we talk about the fandom of Sonic the Hedgehog before we jump into oh, the that's fandom? A before we jump into the fandom <laughs> of Sonic story. the Hedgehog at its Wednesday, that's a very unique way to get into Sonic. I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. It's an orange story. Compared to mine, Sonic. mine was just a surprise Christmas gift my mother got me. <laughs> I don't, yes. I don't remember how I got to Sonic. I just remember playing the game. I think Sonic 2. Then going from there and watching Let's Plays. I watched, like... Have you guys ever heard of Clement? Who? I uh, like, he's a Sonic content... He was a... Okay, he's a less player, essentially, he's been from, like, back in the day, he's still around and shit. Like, he, uh, did a marathon of every single Sonic game in, like, a less play series. And, uh, that's how I pretty much got into, like, a- 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 four, five, six. Yeah, I remember Kobe. He's got- he got into some controversial shit, though, so I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor Kobe. He was so destined for greatness, but he, he made his own tomb. But, uh, yeah, no, I remember Kobe. Call Verone 456. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. And do you, uh, I remember back in the day when Smash for 3DS was, you know, everywhere. I watched this one YouTuber, I don't remember who what his name is. Because, you know, it's been so long. Oh, yeah, I remember now. It's Sully Pones. And what about him? And I always watch this Sonic gameplays of him playing Smash. Oh, okay. I... My first match was Brawl, and I played Sonic via that, and then I got Smash 4 and main Sonic again. So, that's how that was for me. Do you like... A, do you like, um... Timing out your opponents, Gavin. Oh, it is really funny. It, oh my god. It's hilarious. Like, <laughs> like, okay, I don't, I think Sonic needs a little bit of a moveset revamp and smash. Like, his side B and his down B both being spin dash is a little sus, but, um, aside from that, you know, Sonic's really fun in smash. Mind if I pop a Snickers into my mouth? You know, sure. <laughs> if we're, know- if, if, because you're not you when you're hungry. We are mentioning YouTubers that got us into Sonic. There was there was this one anim- animation uh, YouTuber, Sonic YouTuber, that essentially got me into Sonic as well as got me to start cursing. Oh shit, really? Yeah, he, he went by Shao759. I still watch him, but yeah, he's essentially what got me more into Sonic because I found him through his old videos. 
More importantly, he got you into cursing. Yeah, he got me into cursing as well. I like after I started start watching his Shadow and Silver watches, I began cursing. Oh, he's the guy that does that. Yeah, just why Yeah, he does that. He does Sonic reminiscent. This, this man is honestly talented. Okay. That's what cool. the fuck, Amy? <laughs> exactly. Check him out. He has like oh. his own like a uh, little uh, fan series. That's, so uh, can we not talk about the fandom? Can we talk about how sometimes the fandom is cringe? Of course, but everyone knows. Of the Sonic course, fandom. every fandom has its cringe. Everyone knows the Sonic fandom is a little cringe. I mean, there's OCs left and right. Um, you know, if they were, if they had their, you know, own Sonic character. But I don't know. Here's my thing about like the Sonic fandom is so cringe. Yeah, it is sometimes. But you gotta remember, a lot of majority of the fan base, like a large portion of it at least, is small children. Yeah. Exactly. Right. It's like yeah, the majority of them is it's essentially kids. Essentially, so not not all the like the bad art and the OCs and all that stuff. Like, can't really essentially blame, but I'm not trying to like not blame the fandom as well. But you get what I mean. Yeah, I, I get it. Like a, a lot of ki kids really like, they want to be creative. Like they want their own OCs. They want to like make up their own Sonic stories, have their own opinions on different shit like that. Like they, they are cringe. Don't get me wrong, but dead hey, steal the hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just give. I'll give the. I'll just say this. I am guilty of this, but with a different fandom. Persona. Oh. No, it's not Persona either. Okay. It's the regular show fandom. What the? Oh, boy. They have a fandom? Oh, no, that's cursed. That's a I came up with my own fan fiction with Mordecai and Ricky. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that, that serves a sip of water. Was it spicy? I mean, no. It was just oh. crazy. It was just crazy shit that I, whatever pops into my head. So essentially, like, Excuse all right, me. Mordecai and Rigby running for their lives plus my character sounds good. No, I don't have an OG <laughs> for the regular show. So you just came up with fan stories for the regular show. Yeah. Oh my! I, I actually had a uh, Sonic OC as a kid. Wait, you had a I Sonic mean, OC? Kind of... Yeah, I did. I, I remember actually. I do have one. I mean, I'm never gonna show them to you guys. Yeah, you should totally show me that. A, I do have a Sonic yes, OC because because I don't know if I showed you guys, but I used to I I do art, but like mm -hmm. I don't post for the public. Oh, I want oh no, it wasn't you. No, it was it was another group of friends. Jesse, uh, I want to see art. Jesse, you can't just blue ball us like. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, yeah, I do and still do have a Sonic OC. Like, but like, don't judge me for it. I'm sorry. I just it was it was young me and. I couldn't let him go. I I didn't really have a Sonic OC, but in fourth grade I was really bored and I was obsessed with Sonic. So I was just like, ooh, what if all the classic Sonic games were in the adventure format? So then I started thinking to myself, man, this is a good story and a hero story for Sonic 1 and 2. And then I'm going to insert Sally Acorn and all the Freedom Fighters in there for some reason. And then I kept imagining <laughs> this every day. Wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. why you've been writing this whole fucking No, that, time. that was the one I was in fourth grade. <laughs> if I wanted to write a Sonic fanfic, I'd let you know. <laughs> she came up with an OC like that. I remember back in middle school. I was bored, so I was drawing Sonic in class. And then I had no blue. I had no. I said, I didn't have the color blue, so I was like, oh, what if I turn him yellow? <laughs> and now he's Beak of the Hedgehog. <laughs> he, he started out as a recolor, and then I changed him up. Isn't all Sonic OCs kind of recolored? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Even the true, but there are there are some creative uh, ones out there. I've seen a lot of artists who do have um really creative looking ones. And you know what that requires for me to do? Hmm? It requires me to have a pretzel. Yo, I'm just saying, <laughs> freaking Archie did not help with those OCs. Like Archie, the Archie Sonic comics has so many freaking OCs. Oh my god, Scourge and Robo the Edge, which is essentially like a mint green Sonic. <laughs> like Amy's cousin. Um, Jules is just, and his mom is just Sonic with hair. Did you see how like over dramatic some hair. of the artwork was? Like Sonic getting like real like sexual with like Sally, fucking Eggman putting Sonic in Chang's freaking, what the hell? The old comments are just, they were crazy, honestly. I could never get into them because of how over dramatic they were or how weird the art style was. They had two universal resets in the Sonic Archie comics. 
Yeah, like, post wave and then pre Genesis wave. Exactly, it's crazy. <laughs> Plus, like, at least Sally got clothes though afterwards, and it felt more comfortable. Do you remember with the time when Sonic and Tails was in a fucking love triangle? The guy with Fiona. <laughs> that whole thing was just Tails. Come oh, on, yeah. you are the smartest. You you can do better than that. Just like, I how dare you, Sonic, date this girl? And then Sonic's like, yeah, how dare you date her knowing that I love her too? <laughs> yeah, there was just one Sonic the Hedgehog show I remember actually got like you mentioned that. <laughs> and guess what? 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 I saw it and, and Tails was treated like a fucking child. Wait, wait, wait. Well, what, he is what eight. Show? What show? I was just called Sonic Hedgehog. Set. Oh, Sad sorry, a. M. Sad a. M. And I yeah. actually believe Tails is canonical age is 12 and Cream is 8. I think that's how No, uh, no, Tails is, no, Tails is, at least in, Tails is canonically 8 and Cream is 6. What? Well, at least in the games. I've yeah. been lying to you this eight, entire Cream is six. I thought he was 12 this entire time. No, he's 8. That's why I'm saying he's like, he's like essentially a kid genius. Uh, what the fuck? Hey guys, we need to talk about the elephant in the room for of Sonic. And mm -hmm. I know you guys don't like talking about it because if I say the, the second word of it, they'll think you guys be like, fuck no, I'm out. Okay, okay. Lay it on me, brother. Come on. Sonic, boom. Yeah, okay, the TV show is really good. Okay? I like the show. Don't, I don't, I'll fight you on that. The show was good. Yeah, opinion. the writer is suck. very epic. Mm hmm. Is a they have some good writers on there. Mm hmm. I personally. I supported Sonic Boom. I bought the merchandise line. I bought the freaking. I bought the 3DS games. I bought. Oh. I own Sonic Don't Boom. Tell I, me you played I bought the little Earth. figures. Same. Of, of Sonic Boom. Amy was ripped in <laughs> the figure I had of Amy. Wait, you have a ripped Your Amy figure? Ripped. Yeah, like a, a Boom Amy. Like for some reason she had like muscle. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't have her now, but she had a lot of muscle. Like, damn, girl. Is it just like Amy's head on Knuckles' body? <laughs> no, not that buff, but essentially it's her normal body, but like her arms like are a little bit like more uh, more built. Also, Boom Knuckles is one of my favorite knuckles. Oh yeah, honestly, uh, Dumb Knuckles is just, it's just, it's just funny. Like, it's I adorable. prefer him being dumb and Boom than in like the main series, so. At least there he has a personality. Exactly. Me. Approve! Yes, and, we, and he gave us that. Uh, thank Knuckles for that. So that's why he's my favorite character. Mm -hmm. You know, you gotta understand, Amy. The concept of, of a separating in between genders is... <laughs> okay, when you bring I... apart the rows of gender stereotype, it ultimately undermines this situation. Is this being an exception you and really not a status quote? quote. <laughs> what? Just because I'm a pig doesn't mean I'm a feminist. Do you know the quote <laughs> word by word? <laughs> No, don't apologize. That's beautiful. Too much. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that shows how much of a nerd I am. Believe me, I am a closeted Sonic fan, IRL. Hey, what do you know? I finally discovered the truth. Add that to my list of things to remember. Jesse is a nerd. Oh my god. <laughs> and time to lock it up and throw away the key. No, I will find that key and I will destroy that information from your memories. <laughs> Okay, hey, I'll, I did not really watch Sonic Boom, but when I did, it was enjoyable at least. Exactly, like, it, maybe because Cartoon Network only aired it on fucking Saturday mornings. That's true. I, and plus Sometimes I, I manage to get up and see it, other times I'd have to watch it, like, online. I believe uh, I told online. you guys that I don't have cable. True. Uh. I don't have cable, so yeah. Um, mm. freaking, and then... Cartoon Network did that show so dirty. They aired the first season on Saturday mornings on the main channel, and then they moved it to like Sunday evening or Saturday evening on Boomerang. Yeah, honestly, like how dare they treat Sonic Boom like that? It was awful. <laughs> it was like a change like messed me up a bit. And I was like, okay, this is how it's going. And watch the news. I'm just glad that someone knew the reference and I did, and I didn't. Mm. Yes, I know it. I have it memorized. Honestly, I'll, I'll quote it when. <laughs> also, uh, thank you, Knuckles, for that blessed lines. I want to bring up something very interesting. Roger mm -hmm. Craig Smith, no. Roger Craig Smith, the voice actor of Sonic currently, has been voicing yeah. him for ten years now. 
Yeah, he voiced him back in um, 2010. He started voicing him in in uh, in Colors. I say Free Riders. Still going on now. Free Riders, yeah, Free Riders. Mm-hmm. And then he Knuckles is confirmed a feminist. Knuckles. <laughs> Boom! Knuckles is a confirmed feminist. <laughs> I choked. <laughs> how, how do you guys feel about who's your favorite Sonic voice actor? Let me get into that. Ooh, okay. Jason Griffith, and only because no, wait, no, no, he's not my favorite. Knuckles is voice actor. Uh, Scott Dreyer is my favorite Sonic voice actor. Maybe it's because of my bias for Knuckles, but Knuckles. yeah. Jason Griffith <laughs> is my favorite Sonic voice for sure. Like Ra- like Ryan Drummond is likable. Like I like Ryan Drummond. It's just that the Adventure Games like didn't age that well. <laughs> hey, hey, Jesse. Hmm. Finish this if you've heard this one before. It all oh, comes God. down to this one penalty kick. Can the young woman and break the glass ceiling and prove once and for all that a female can just be just good a, a, as an athlete as a male? You know, Amy, when one undermines the gen- role of gender stereotype, it ultimately undermines this situation as being a... <laughs> I guess forgot the line. As an exception. As an exception. As an exception and not the status quo. Let me say it since you obviously butchered it. No, 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 she got <laughs> it. She got it. It's fine, I got it. I got it. No, she didn't. I need to, no, you take on. a sip of water. You know, it's Amy, water. anytime yeah. someone calls attention to the breaking of the gender rules, it ultimately undermines the concept of the gender equality by implying that uh, this is an exception and not the, the status quo. What? Just because I'm a um, meathead doesn't mean I'm a fem- not a feminist. Worse than I did, so ha. I just want to state the season finale for season one of Sonic Boom was about uh, Sonic and the gang building a freaking shelf and the supervillains coming to fight them. And Shadow showed up. Yeah, Shadow up out of nowhere was just was great. And oh, yeah, Sonic not- is a poor excuse of a hedgehog because he can't make a shelf. Yes, I own, I own, the, <laughs> I own that episode on DVD. <laughs> Yeah, but give me your DVD. No, your I shoddy don't. craftsmanship brings shame on all hedgehogs. Dude, <laughs> I I got that freaking DVD for buying Sonic Boom Fire and Ice at launch. Leave me alone. Oh wow. Mhm. Hello. Hmm. Okay, so let me think of a thingy topic. Blah. Sonic Boom, am I right, fellas? It's fun. Games are pretty crap. It's fun, though. The jokes are fun to me. But sadly, it cost Sega a freaking fortune. Like, ugh. Oh, it didn't do that well financially. So, and they invested a lot of money into Sonic Boom. So, I don't know. It caused a lot of financial they also ha- They also handed Sonic Boom to a company that didn't really have much experience in, in producing the game. I guess uh, I've heard. It's a big red uh, from button. Big red button, and they were, and like, and they were having problem with employees and stuff, and essentially, and then it got worse when people saw that Sonic Boom became the new Sonic 06. Yeah, essentially, like Sonic Boom originally. I mean, at least Sonic 06 at least sucked, and it was you know, laughable sucked. While Sonic Boom, Boom was boring. Boring sucked. Like, okay, <laughs> Sonic Boom. I think if you're like a little kid, and the game is patched, by the way. Like once the game is like patched and stuff, and you're like a young child. Sonic Boom gives me the vibes of like a Lego game almost, except not as fun, but you know. But that's what it gives me, like that's the vibe Sonic Boom gives me. Like, it was originally supposed to be on like, a different console, like PS3, PS4, or something like that. But then, uh, Sega had that deal with Nintendo for the, like, the three game deal, which was like, Sonic Lost World, and Mario Sonic, it was the game game, and boom. And that kind of fucked them over, they had to switch engines, and then, um, yeah, and then that led to Boom being kind of shit. <laughs> and then Knuckles' is infinite jump. Just... They patched it, it's so sad. They did? Oh. It's so hey sad. guys, guys, guess what? What? Sonic Boom, the show, was never in Japan until July 1st of 2017. Wow. No, that's interesting. Season I one- heard some... I heard something that apparently so- uh, Boom Sonic was po- well, at least I don't know if it's a theory, but Boom Sonic was apparently supposed to be a Sonic Forces, but because of how bad Forces did, they scrapped him and added an OC character, mainly because of the of the of the power the OC has to like fling uh, 
that, that, that kind of rope thing around. Oh, kind of like the synergy band thing they had or whatever? Yeah. That, that can make sense. Who would you say is the best voice actor for, for, for uh, any character of the Sonic franchise? I already said Jason Griffith for Sonic, Mike Pollock for Eggman, obviously. Um, yeah, I definitely think... agree with that. I grew up with Griffith, honestly. Mm -hmm. He wasn't as energetic as uh, as Ryan, but he brought like a fresh take on Sonic. He's relaxed, he's cool, he's chill. And his performance only yeah. got better over time. Like. Him and Unleashed in Black Knight is perfect. Honestly. Besides some of the little speeches he, speeches he got going around. But yeah, he did improve. And he probably like, would have kept improving if Sega had kept him. Yeah, like, okay, do you not like his little anime friendship speeches? <laughs> that were funny. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Can we all admit that <laughs> Sonic X was at least good? Sonic X, okay. I like X. Honestly. Yeah, like, it's kind of a guilty pleasure for me, but I enjoy it. What the <laughs> frick? What the frick is this? I just found. Out. What the frick? Send it. What did you, what did you, what did you find? Something very interesting. <laughs> Something that's like, what the frick, guys? <laughs> I'll send in podcast. Yeah, I gotta see this. That episode where they're all fighting for a chaos emerald. <laughs> Tails went down in a single swoop, or should I say kiss? Like what the freak happened? Tails to got Tails? the Tails got the funny kiss. Yes. What the frick happened to poor Tails? He just he just he just too much love and just he just kind of. You can also admit though, I think if you ask me, between. I mean, it's competitor at the time I mean, for Sonic, between Sonic X and, uh, and, you know, and then what it was fighting against, Kirby right back at you. I think I like Kirby right back at you better. I don't blame you, but I never uh, really watched it, so... I mean, I... A little I, bit recently, like on YouTube. It's alright. That was fun. We all admit that Sonic, whenever Classic Sonic's milked to death by the, by Sega. Listen, Classic Sonic is milked to death because he's pretty consistent. That's With how he fans, plays. they're doing it for nostalgia. Exactly. This is how I see it. It's yeah, we don't need we don't need Classic Sonic in a game, man. Just let him stay with. Just let him stay in his own game, the classical games, and like let them just be two separate things. At least in my opinion. Sonic, Classic Sonic plays so badly in forces. Like, what happened? I could tell from from the people I was watching. According to research, I've discovered that um, um that that actually the developers had to rework the game, uh, the physics of Classic Sonic. They were required to do this by Sega. Like rework him from generations, or yeah, the format or something. Because the lines of code for Classic Sonic were corrupted, so they had to, you know... Uh, what the... Okay, listen. Oh, wow. Well. I... Ooh, engine first, or, you know, first Classic Sonic from scratch. Okay, they, I understand they had to do it from scratch, but, dude, you have Christian Whitehead literally working on Mania at the same time they're working on Forces. Just literally have him come in and just be like, okay, I'll help you out a little bit. Because they have the drop dash in Forces. The thing right, Sonic yeah. Mania used to be a fan game, and now it's a monetized game. Listen, Mania's awesome, okay. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It's like... Mania did well, I see, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah, everyone, wa everyone loved Mania when it came out. I still love it. Exactly. But when you ask someone about Sonic Forces, it's like... It's like, ooh, that's... We don't talk about that here. What? We You're don't telling... talk about the Minecraft server. You guys are telling me you don't... Pray every day to our Lord and Savior fist bump. I mean, I like fist bump. The best Sonic Christ theme me. ever. I think it's because I heard it. I heard it so much that it actually became unbearable. Hey guys, but it, it's, it's, it's an alright song. What? I... Can we sing it for the outro? Uh, Please. I was gonna say. I was just about to sing it to myself a little bit. <laughs> Please, Gavin. We did the iCarly thing. You want to sing fist bump for the outro? Yes. <laughs> I'm down. Okay. Alright. Alright, it's a plan. 
Oh my gosh. Alright. Also, can I, I- I just like to state that in Sonic Forces, Sonic is captured for an entire year, supposedly tortured and shit, and then he's like, all good and just like, Oh, hey guys! What did I miss? <laughs> exactly! That's then what like... my biggest gripe with that game was. <laughs> Like, yes, he was taken. Sonic was beaten to fucking death. <laughs> They've been torturing here for months, as Knuckles recalls. Yep. But he seems perfectly fine. Then again, his encounter with Infinite, he was asking random questions. So maybe but, he was slowly going insane. But yeah, remember, Knuckles is a feminist, though, okay? Knuckles was a warlord. They made him a warlord. What does this? What does he know about leading? I just want to state that Knuckles- He became more serious. Knuckles caused the death of like, so many of his troops. Like, they didn't show it or anything, but it's like, oh but no- But it's hinted at. Yeah, exactly. It's like an ambush. Oh no, we're losing troops. And it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> and then Sonic's like, all right, I'm not going to help him. And also, the OC character, the custom character, he had a- he or she had a character arc where it's like, he's dealing with- they are dealing with PTSD from Infinite and just like- Yeah, like, this is- a bunch the of their friends were just killed in front of them and they're just staring and just- Infinite's right there. And also- What are you gonna do? Are you gonna stay here and fight? Or are you gonna run away in fear? Infinite has a pretty sexy voice. <laughs> He does. He's he. he I've, his voice actor is the same as someone from one of the Persona games as well. What? I think it's Persona uh, Three. Yeah, Infinite's uh, Infinite has a voice actor from Persona Three. So, uh, I, I forgot what his name is. But while I was going through a uh, gameplay, I was I, I was I was listening to the voice. I'm like, oh, that sounds familiar. And, like it's Infinite it's VA. Infinite voice actor. Uh, what's his name? What's the name? His name is. Uh... And Tails went insane. Apparently. Lion O'Brien. Chaos was Lion lost, O'Brien. and then he was just working on Omega, and then Chaos was like, Brrr, and Classic Sonic was like, <laughs> Tails presents his presents his ass cheeks to Chaos as an offering. Yeah. <laughs> Classic comes in. My man, Chaos got so scum. They didn't even use Chaos either. It just he got ju listen. Classic Sonic jumped on him once, and then boom, gone. Yeah, he went sploosh, and then he like doesn't appear again until like the end fight. Exactly. Like, wait, wait, who did Liam O'Brien play as in Persona 3? I don't know, someone. But I remember uh, watching through with someone's uh, someone's no, gameplay, played, and no, they were no. and they were mentioning it sounded familiar. And they he also played as Orlando from Catherine. Mm. Makes sense. So that you. makes. I mean, I'll look for it later, and then I'll send it to you guys. And he also I'll played Doctor Strange. <laughs> yes. Infinite, or should I say Mephilus Jr.? Look at the little Mephilus Jr. Gonna cry? <laughs> <laughs> Look who's little Goblin Jr. Gonna cry? Freaking, <laughs> oh my gosh. Infinite's backstory is like, oh yeah, the mercenary for Eggman. Shadow's like, you suck, alright? And he's like, oh. I don't suck. Ugh! Now I wear a mask. Now I'm evil. No one cared about who I was before mask. I put on the mask. Coronavirus. Be like Infinite, wear a mask. Hey, Adam's gonna, Adam's gonna like this. He plays as Luminous in, in uh, Trap Team. I, I liked Infinite's theme. Oh, I don't know. When it came out, I liked it. He's Akihiko. Okay, okay, okay. No wonder that name something sounded familiar. Ooh. He's Akihiko Sadadon. I've been waiting for this. I mean, I actually showed that video. To, I believe I showed that video to Jesse. Uh, I've been waiting for this. Like, at least not at the moment. Like I keep go saying that, you right? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Liam O'Brien. All right. I like how we're all going quiet now. Yeah, I'm just thinking right now. Are oh, you thinking about to ask us next? Yeah, essentially. Favorite Sonic <laughs> game? I haven't asked this yet. Like I said, Sonic Riders, because it's the first game I play. I have a total bias to that game. That's fair. And from to many, it was apparently hard to control, but in my opinion, I found it. I found it really fun. Once oh, you got yeah. the hang of the controls, exactly, and as oh, well as the as a trick system as well, like right, with rewards as well as taking if you like mess up in certain areas. I just realized I didn't talk about the other Sonic game I played on the Wii. That being Sonic Riders Zero oh, yeah. Gravity. 
You know what? Both okay. Those first two writers games are actually really good. Okay. And then the last one sucked. Let's be honest. Okay, yeah, but that's because of the Xbox Connect. Okay. Connect is the one that ruined it. Yeah, <laughs> we all agree. It's you know, or go vote him out. But uh, yeah, <laughs> Rider, both of the Rider games are really good. In my opinion. Uh, I mean, you have a good opinion there. I didn't own the game though, but I played it at my uh, like I was at a church thing, and they had a Wii for the kids that waited. Oh, huh. interesting. And they, like had, they had a Wii, and they had Sonic Rider Zero Gravity on there. Yeah. Huh. I mean, they also had Mario Party Eight. They had uh, Kirby uh, Air Ride. Oh, Air Ride. Okay. No. Oh. They also had, uh, literally over hedge, over the hedge, the video game. Yeah, I kid you the not. Movie. <laughs> the movie game. <laughs> you know, okay, so. I'm oh, sorry. One thing I'm getting, like, real sick of is, like, so you have ports of classic games all the time. Whether it be Sonic 1, 2, CD, not 3 because of copyright, but, um, freaking... Okay, <laughs> pop quiz. What? What's what? your favorite Sonic fan game? Favorite Sonic fan game? Yes. That's a hard one. Technically, maybe the fan game. Yeah, because it was originally a fan game. Yeah, I was just about to say that. My favorite Sonic fan game, I'd say... Uh, that's a tough one, because most of the games I've played of the Sonic fan games is just the official ones. Mm. Like uh, Infinity Engine. I've seen that at least a bit of it. And, um, they, like, came out recently with, like, a gameplay of, um, of Shadow. I guess if that terms would be, like, I guess a favorite fan game? I mean, I haven't played it, but I've seen others play it. I personally have never really dwelled into the, uh, Sonic fan games like that, so. But I know they're, like, really big, like, they have full-on conventions for mods and fan games. Yeah. So it's really good. <laughs> and you know what? I really like how Sega allows uh, fans to have different fan games and let them stay up, you know? It's really good. Yeah, they're not as strict as Nintendo. Right? Keep... Yeah, they're like not Nintendo. Like, we're gonna steal your grass. Like, someone works 10 years on like a remake of it, like one of their favorite Nintendo games, and then Nintendo takes it down and then like, releases their own remake of said game. Um, I mean, I know that would be a slap in the face. It did happen. Yeah, it's called Met. It did happen, Jesse. Is called Metroid Two, and it's also called Oh Wow the Super Mario sixty four PC port. Oh yeah. wow! And then three D All Stars happened. God damn Nintendo! <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then, and for some reason. Okay, you know how, how we just said that Sega is really generous about people, you know, porting, you know, their like games to you know newer hardware. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, that's actually completely false. Okay, I, I know Wait. you'll say that's Atlas. I know you'll say this. It is Atlas. Atlas. But, it is Atlas. But guess what? Sega is their parent company. Yeah, but say okay, so. I think it's also the parent company of like Sonic Team and Sonic the Sonic brand in general. So I think it, production. I think it really is more of an Atlas thing than a Sega thing. Because they actually, so a fan was working on a PC port of Persona 5, and of course, Atlas caught wind of it and you know ordered them to stop it. Yeah, that's an Atlas thing. Like Sonic, on the other hand, this is different. Yeah, exactly. Like Sonic had like. Heroes ports for PC, you have freaking the Unleash project, you have, um, I'm just going off the top of my head right now. Sonic Generation. Really support their fan base. So, I think, the, I think the reason why they support their fan base is for marketing, because, you know, 
since you know Sonic does future does hold by a thread by you know Sega trying to you know capitalize on the fact. Like okay. Oh. Well, here's the thing. Sonic is very active, like in the 2010s. That is, like Sonic's very active with it is his fan base, like the brand itself. Whether it be like people like Aaron Weber running the social media stuff um, and giving their input, giving their input and sharing uh, shit like that, or like different conventions or you know full on ports and mania and shit. Like I really, I don't know. You could be, you could see in like a cynical light where it's like, okay, that's good for marketing and branding, but I think that's like a really cool thing, and I think other companies should give um, fans that kind of opportunity. Mhm. Mm Yes, see, like, they're a little bit more involved. Exactly. You have to remember with this, though. Even though Sega and Atlas themselves are the parent company, the the thing is, though, like, Sega is the parent company of Atlas. You cannot change the fact of that. But one thing I'll never understand, though, is that P-Studio is a parent company of Atlas, and then Atlas is a parent company of Sega. Again... I view it as different terms. Like, Atlas is very strict when it comes to their IPs compared to, like, Sonic Team. I, I mean, they're not strict, strict. Yes, they are. Um, They're only strict about when it comes to trying to, you know, put a game on something else. I don't know, man. Have you seen their streamer their stream guidelines? <laughs> I mean, they're not really against content creators. It's just when they spoil the game without actually thinking, oh, that's a spoiler, you know? I don't know, man. Atlas is. I mean, a... no, seriously. Um, fun fact. Uh, you know, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, and that's being a re-release. Yep. The Japanese guidelines dictate that you cannot upload or you know post any single thing of the game. Which, again, like Atlas is very strict when it comes to community stuff. I mean, the same thing could be said for Catherine Full Body. But the funny thing is, though, I do not. I do the one thing that I think that's weird, though, is that Atlas doesn't take further upon that. They just say it, and then you know they don't do anything. Even though I will give them this, they, they do copyright. A life will change on you all the time, all, every time I right. play it on stream. But for some reason, the instrumental one's fine. Oh yeah, the instrumental version of life will change. You. By the way, we're not talking about Sonic right now. This is like full on <laughs> just um, persona now. Persona. <laughs> we're talking about Sega, you imbeciles. <laughs> Persona. Persona! Um, freaking, um... Arsene! You know, Joker oh, and Christ. Sonic are in the same game, and Morgana can dress as Sonic in the dancing game. Persona! Anyways. Um... Hey guys, <laughs> up. I think that just about wraps it up, I think, if you ask me, Gavin. Uh, mm. We yeah. don't really have much else to talk about. I feel uh, like, for some reason, I feel like we only scratched the surface, but that could just be me. There's a lot of talk about Sonic. I exactly, mean, I think we Sonic's only... been talked about for decades, honestly. His games are diverse, and people just continuously talk about him, because, you know, it's regardless of whether people he's good or bad, it's he's just, a he's a hot topic for them. Exactly, like, he's the household name in the gaming world. I talked to about this earlier, but he's more of an icon, like a pop culture icon than a gaming icon for me. Yeah, I could totally see it, especially since I can't, I haven't been able to get my hands on a Sonic game in a while. Exactly. But I you're plan still, to. If, but you're still a fan. You can play Sonic. Exactly. Get on your phone. I play the mobile, mobile stuff, obviously. I have a speed battle. Uh, Sonic Forces speed battle? Yeah. Oh no. Oh it's no. Fun. Please God, no. I know it's, it's kind of like uh, Sonic Dash, essentially, but there's more, I guess. It's multiplayer Sonic Dash stuff. with different characters. Multiplayer, yeah. And then they can fight against others, and they, they actually see cards and stuff. Would go up if I search up Sonic. They actually got, um, uh, freaking Whisper and, uh, what's her name? Uh, Whisper and Tangle, yeah, they, they got into a speed battle. Which is awesome. Yeah. Also, RVs, I think, uh, they, had a sp they had something sponsored, but they didn't sponsor Sonic specifically. I mean, Sonic, yeah, but they, but they use Tangle as in their advertising. I don't know if you've seen it. I have not seen that. Yeah, Arby's like they were like, they had they were like Arby's sponsoring Sonic, really but it, they were using the Tangle. Huh? And people were like saying, "Oh, what if they end up in a game or something?" The Arby. 
Dude, Barbies. One, one game that I feel like needed either more marketing or more... I don't know how to describe it. But I think Team Sonic Racing could have used a little bit more time in the oven or marketing. Because no one talks about it, but it's actually alright. I don't like Sonic, Team Sonic Racing. It's just the fact to me... Uh, essentially, you have to hope to God that your team helps pull their weight. Which is not that bad of a gimmick. You can still do solo races if you want. It's just uh, the fact of that that sets me off about it. Like, I've played like local co-op Team Sonic Racing, and it's really fun. Like, don't play the Switch port, it, it looks awful. Oh yeah, no, I, I played the PS4 port. That's good, you're a good it. child. You're a good boy. Oh, very good boy. You're a good boy, oh Gavin. <laughs> You're a good boy. Head pats. Oh, I get head pats. Head pats. Head pats. I really wish more modern Sonic games had ports, like Generations, Unleashed, Colors. I really, I was going about this, talking about this earlier with the classic ports and shit like that. But I really want more modern Sonic ports, so that you know those games are more accessible to people. Like, I know there's like, like a lot of PC ports for like Lost World and Generations and stuff, which is great. But what the? What about Unleashed, man? Yeah, I, I do not like that they do not talk about it anymore. It is sad. Can I say something? Uh. Meow? Uh, meow. Bang, bang, bang. I. I okay, so you, nice both saw the Son you both saw the Sonic movie, right? I did. Yes. Of okay. course, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah. Ow. Yeah, did you guys see it in theaters? I didn't, but I watched it. I wasn't able to. Play. Damn it! Okay, because I was gonna talk about. Man, you wanna talk about your movie theater experience with that? <laughs> was I wasn't able to see it in theaters. I was trying remember, to. Oh, February was during the start of a certain thing I cannot talk about without this video being claimed by. Right. You know. Yeah, certain, uh, certain, um, illness. A certain, a certain thing that we cannot talk about because there's you-know-what will put a The you platform does not like it. A certain, yes. uh, beer bread. <laughs> yeah, a certain definitely. beer bread. Definitely a certain type of beer bread. I'll definitely admit that right now. Mm -hmm. But, so, the Sonic movie was the last movie I ever saw in theaters, and I talked about it really briefly in the first episode of the podcast, but, dude, I was pogging the entire time. <laughs> I mean, I mean, at least it was. It wasn't the worst video game film out there. Dude. There are much, much worse, which is the Resident Evil games. And literally movies. almost any other video game film adaptation. And then Hitman. Oh my God. Assassin's Creed. You forget about that one. Yes, I did, and I do not want to talk about it. <laughs> but like, it's a top-grossing film in box office, you know, due to the C word. But still, uh. <laughs> but like, it's the top grossing film of 2020. It beat Marvel. Right, yeah, it even beat Endgame. <laughs> well, honestly, which is honestly a high for Sonic for me at least. Like, freaking. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I actually like Endgame. I mean, I, who doesn't like Endgame? I don't like it anymore. I don't like. I don't like it anymore because Gavin likes it. Oh no. The ending hurt me. <laughs> the. What, did it what call? sucks is I managed to see the spoilers before the actual thing. I hate, I hate so. it when that happened. Yeah, I, mean, I was the, trying so hard to like avoid spoilers, but I somehow did. But the funny thing is, this applied to Gavin with Persona 5 Royal because of my big mouth. Yeah, literally, I get in a conversation with Noir. He's just like, Gavin, Gavin, can I please spoil Persona 5 Royal for you? Can I please spoil Persona 5 Royal for you? And I'm just like, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, spoilers and anything have always tempted me. Like I haven't, I haven't, you know, seen Persona 5 Royal, and then when you started playing it, I tried to get in with you, and then I was tempted, so I essentially just watched the ending. You, oh, uh, you watched God, the yeah, ending? Yeah, see. See, so okay. yeah, I did. I, I know already what's happening. I know what casts are gonna come up. I know the different. Like, sorry, Gavin. It's all good. I, I had to. I curiosity. I, I saw the show times as well. Ah, uh, uh, you know which one is awesome, then. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, it was very tempting, and it was like, okay, okay, here we go. Uh, can I say this? But uh, can I say this at least? Mm -hmm. 
Even though it may be a spoiler, but it won't affect it. I don't think anyone will know the context. It's just a no context quote of, you know, the game. Okay. All right. No, dude, that's a bike. Oh, that, oh dude, we already we, we <laughs> have that. Come on. We passed that, I think. <laughs> okay, lo- okay, let me do it again. Let me try it again. Kill it, shit. The denial. Okay, yeah, that one the. Ah. Uh, <laughs> and we just go back to Persona. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Persona Podcast Checkmate. 1. <laughs> you should have done this podcast for, you should have done Persona Podcast first, <laughs> Gavin. Well, here's the thing, majority of the people in the channel are just following along on the freaking stream, so I can't really What about Kingdom Hearts though? Okay, I can do Kingdom Hearts. Can okay. you? Oops. Well you won't be able to get Zach into watching the video, I know that much. Mm-hmm. Because he, you know, it needs to catch up on Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, Adam's not even done with Kingdom Hearts 3 either. We're getting way off topic. I mean, what can I say? I'm pretty good at getting off topic very easily. Damn right you are. I mean, you know how I just changed the subject instantly. Mm-hmm. That's true. You were talking about Atlas, then we jumped onto Persona. <laughs> and then we talked about spoilers. So yep, end game uh, for a few seconds. I loved, I loved how oh, Iron Man took... Uh, on Goku with the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> Lightning McQueen's death was so tragic. I know, right? And then, and, and then also Jesse saw that one video of the beauty of the film is that uh, Iron Man still had loved ones to save, so he used the Infinity Gauntlet to protect his loved ones from um, Goku uh, with the six Infinity Stones. <laughs> Remember that, Jesse? I showed you that video yesterday. Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> Yes, I do. Because as we both need a PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's a no, There's an out of context thing you people can use. By you people, do you mean you? Because you run. You and Adam both run the out of context page. Hey, he can. He can do it. I know he can do it. Mm. You're, you're stepping down. I can do it still, but he can do this one because you know, I'm the one that said it. Also, I I just realized something. There is a Mario and Sonic Olympic Games video game that happened, but without an actual Olympic game to be adapted from. That being the 2021. I just realized that. Oh. Speaking, of- play another Sonic game. Now I just realized it. I, I, I played think- Sonic and Mario at the Winter Olympic Games. That was epic. It, it was fun. I just remember now. It has to do still with that same family. They did have a Sonic game, I remember, and I did remember playing that with, with the kid. I hate Sochi 2014 Olympic Games. If 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 a downgrade. It's like it's like Sega's like, how can we make the most money possible without making people feel like they're getting scammed? <laughs> in my opinion, the best Olympic Games, aside from the Olympic Winter one, is the 2012 London Olympic Games. Fuck no. It's a fact, please accept it. I do not want to accept it because the 3DS port has a fucking fanfic. Oh, it's all good. Come on, just accept it. No, I don't want to accept it because it's mostly a minimi game collection. It tells you right out of the gate of what does what because guess what? Because they think that we're stupid. I mean, it is meant for younger players, you know. For the kitties. Yeah, it's, it's not meant to be like Dark uh, Souls. Jesse, thing. you probably do not want to say that. No. We're gonna get what? this video labeled as for kids now. No, no, oh, no, no, no. No, it's no, it's definitely for the older, more mature people like me. There you go, fuck. There uh, you go, I had to say, to, to make sure our pureness isn't, you know, This is definitely growing. not for kids. If you are a child, get off. We curse here. Please be gone we, now, thank we you. We curse, we say fuck, we say shit, we say damn. <laughs> Bye, drink chat lover. And sometimes I just... All right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, you know, whenever I make content, like, with the games like Crash and shit like that, that's kind of intended for younger audiences and the kids watch, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna swear a lot. Either get out of here or don't blame me for when, you know, you start cursing. When he starts swearing, he's a good boy, but when he swears, that's when he means it. The Bandicoot. Bruh! 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 And Gavin guess what? Gavin's screams intensify. Gavin's screams intensify! Oh my gosh. 
Whenever Gavin plays a game and he's struggling, I feel that struggle. Like when he messes up in Kingdom Hearts and dies, I feel that pain. When I when I watch him play, I physically Hearts, feel the pain. When I when I watch him play Kingdom Hearts, I'm like, let him suffer, suffer, you little shit. Like, come on, Gavin, come on, goddamn it. Listen, anytime I <laughs> listen, Kingdom Zemnis has ruined the tur the word leaving for me. Okay, I'm never gonna be able to hear it. Hear leaving so soon. Leaving. The darkness. In Remind, currently, we still have to do Shion and Master Xehanort. That's gonna be fun. That's definitely gonna be fun if you have to take on Master Xehanort. Ah, uh, dude, that looks like hell from what I played for, like, the first, the few rounds I did. I only got, like, I one combo that. win. Anyways, do Oof. we have anything else you want to say about Sonic? Cause we're getting way, way off time. We're talking about the fucking channel now. <laughs> hey, what can we say? Well, it's thanks to Sonic that essentially my name came to be. That's true. With actually, the jet in it. Actually, I have a question for you, Jesse. Um, I actually mm -hmm. wanted to bring this up. What's it like making comic dubs? Um, I, to me, it's, it was before I uh, essentially lost my own confidence in my own voice. It was honestly pretty fun, just just saying random lies, and if I mess up, just redoing it, and then ed having to edit it and put it together, try to add sound effects or something. It's in my opinion. I, I liked it. I'm willing to help with uh, the comic dubs. Yeah. Like I, I still, I still plan on doing like. I think I'm gonna start doing VA work, not just for Sonic, but maybe for other things in general too. I'm gonna try like to for branch the out. Comic dubs. But aside from comic dubs, like just, just, uh, just what I think in general, yeah, attempting just... to level my voice and stuff. Exactly, just okay. VA work in general. Like I said, oh. I'm attempting, one day I'm going to attempt to sound like a male, just like this one person I saw. It took them 12 I years to master a male voice, male. I'm going to try it. No, like, she legit sounds like a guy. When I first found her channel, I thought, oh, this is guy really has a really good voice. And then I looked through the comments, and it was like, this is actually a girl, like, a legit girl. And she essentially told, she told everyone how eventually the process went through of her constantly training her voice. And whenever she voices a character, she'll listen to him first, and then regurgitate it. I am trying my best. I do not sound like a girl at all. I sound like a... a trap. Know. I'm a trap, guys. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm a fucking <laughs> trap. I used to, like, play around with, like, Black Doom's voice and attempt to, like, gargle it. I don't know. Like, did you know Black Doom? Everyone in the past, I did do, yeah. Did you know Black Doom is the same voice actor as Goku? Yeah. <laughs> So are we gonna? Are, since we're getting way off topic, um, are we gonna end that episode here? Uh, you guys down for that? Or because we've been recording for a hour and seven minutes. Huh. All these recent podcast episodes are like an hour. <laughs> and then, and then sometimes we do something stupid at the end. That's true. We got ah. sing fist bump. We're singing One fist. Bump. fist bump. I will say that Jet the Hawk is. Best Sonic character. <laughs> uh, play Sonic. I just like his personality. Uh, Unleash is a good game. Um, uh, you know, uh, Advance One is the best advanced game. Um, I do alone. Even though I am strong, need something more to me. Someone to push me. Do We're not singing good. yet! Let's do what we That's like do. Together, oh. me and you. Can't be a afraid try. Kiss your fears goodbye. No, go look at that. You and I were on a. Oh my god, we're on a stage. Oh, okay. We can make it better. We can make it better. We can We can do it. We can do it. You and next to me were next to you. Push it under until the battle is won. Standing united after the fight. Oh, 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 o
I know you had been afraid before, but you don't have to see anymore. Oh my gosh. It's the feeling inside. When we run together, don't get break up us. Looking back, you and I were on the attack. Running to the sun. Such a we make it make better. It better. <laughs> this is this chaotic? You are next to me when I'm next to you. You are going to the battle for us. Don't let that thing to us. We need each other. We put our trust. And it united after the fight. Stop! Dun 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 by, uh, by Mr. Pascal. We can show the world what we can do. You I are not. Our next to me when I'm next to you. You should definitely see it. Not through in the, in the meme one. version of it, it's like, it's a Those brand new day. Oh, yeah. We have turned it. Hold on, Noir, stop. After the fight, we each other. Discord is not enjoying this. I gotta find an instrument for version of this Never knew how much I hated it. So I made it all in this way. Oh, Lord, we will never be the two of us. Yes, go on. <laughs> we see today what we couldn't see before I say goodbye to you. One, One more, more life, life is born. All right. My voice Beautiful. is dead. <laughs> you didn't even warn us! I couldn't see because everyone going. was off beat in yeah. their stream. Oh my gosh, it was like... I mean... <sighs> you were going slow and then Noir was going fast. Yeah, oh. I was going at the tempo of the song. It was kind of fast, the song. Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh. Mm. I'm gonna have to find I'm gonna ask a cover artist some or someone to get me like an instrumental version of that that I'm allowed to use. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to find that. You got permission for that. I know. I had I had to get permission for the freaking um uh All Star cover too back in episode seven. Oh so are we done? Yes we are. I believe so. Alright, peace oh, out everyone. Gavin. Say hello to future yeah. Gavin. Peace out, right. Hey, Gavin Gales, what's going on? It's Future Gavin here, and it's been a while. So, stay a while. You know, take your socks off and enjoy the site. It's the Socks Off Podcast. Yeah, it's been a while since the last episode of Socks Off. That's completely on me. I'm completely sorry. I will try to be more consistent with this series going forward. And, in which case, you know, you're watching this in post, and hopefully we're more consistent in the future, and you're just re-watching this, and you don't care about this message. So, yeah, hopefully this ages badly because, you know what, hopefully we're more consistent in the future. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this episode of the Socks Off Podcast. Um, this episode took a lot of work. It went through a lot of development. Um, thank you so much, Jet Jesse and Noir, for starring on this episode. It was a really fun episode. I, you know, I'm glad to have other people to talk to about Sonic because, you know, I have a soft spot for the little blue fella. And, uh, yeah, it was really fun talking to you guys about him. And speaking of thanking, I want to thank Jet Jesse for making the assets for this episode. All the art in this episode, like all the OCs, or like, you know, um, the G-Meister, the Jet Jesse, the Noir characters, uh, the Sonic virgins, I guess you can call them, um, all done by her. They look amazing. Please, go in the link in the description and check her out. Give her, like, the love and the credit she put into this art, man. She deserved it. She put a lot of work and effort into it. And honestly, it's easily my favorite part of this entire episode. Um, yeah, I also want to give thanks to Noir again for starring on this episode. I, I appreciate that so much, my guy. And yeah, um, you know, Adam for putting it all together, managing us. you being like, schedule time, blah, blah, blah. You know, he does that sort of thing. And thank you, Adam, for doing that. And there's not really much else to say um i hope you guys and gals enjoyed the video if you did make sure to you know like comment subscribe and stuff like that um click all the links down below you know noir's link links jesse's links um adam's links my links you know it, it's all very high it's highly appreciated and um 
yeah. I'll see you all in the next one. You know, peace out, my throughout. Have a great night, everybody, you know, and hopefully we have more socks off coming in the future, at least in more consistent format. Again, thank you, Jed Jizzy, for the amazing R. Okay, I really don't know. Peace!